Hi YouTube, uh, thank you for joining me today. I don't know what's happening in your neck of the woods, but we are currently between snow showers. And of course, right at the beginning of seed starting season, you saw me start some of my herbs last time, which take forever. Those are all doing well and germinating. Um, there's a couple that still haven't, but time takes a really long time. Oh, I'll see what I did there. I know you did, but uh, so I, if you don't follow me on Instagram, the at homestead, that is where I'm posting all of like our pictures of the germinations and just our daily things, the other things that we do here on the homestead um, that I don't necessarily or haven't gotten a chance to share yet. So don't forget to check us out over there so that you can follow my seeds. I think I check them daily and I like touch them. I want them to grow big and strong and we don't have a fan on them or anything. I just touch them all the time and I don't know. I'm probably that crazy plant lady that talks to her seedlings, but I'm sure none of you are surprised. Anyway, <laughs> I really wanted to take a moment <clears throat> to go over seed starting because I think I breezed through it before pretty quickly. And I think it's because maybe I take the fact that I start seeds for granted. And I just wanted to talk to all you new gardeners out there or those of you that have tried seed starting in before we're like, I can't do it, it's too much. Um, <clears throat> or anyone who's just nervous about starting seeds to begin with, it is a much more economical way to grow your plants um, if you are in that mindset. And listen, if I can do it, you can do it. It's so easy. I mean, <clears throat> when I first started, and I first started doing seeds, I, had nothing. So all this other stuff I'm going to show you is really just because I've been doing this for a long time and now I have a bigger garden. So like if you're just getting started or just started a garden last year and this may be your first time seed starting, um, don't get nervous of all of the like things I'm going to show you because all you really need, sorry, my door keeps going open. Oh, now we're locked in. Um, so really all you need is your seed, a growing medium, a container, preferably with drainage inside another container, um, and I'll tell you why, and some sort of access to light, sunlight. If you do not have that, or if you don't have like a window that gets a lot of light all day, or you don't um, have any of that stuff, then you honestly, like, I put my seeds in the back of um, our office for what we have like this sunroom that we converted to an office. It's this one right here. And the back door gets very, like so much less sun than the front side of the house. But with little kids, I can't put seeds on the ground in the front. So I literally put my seeds in the back door and shut the blinds on them that have a white back and they grew just fine. So they were a little leggy, some of them, but, um, as long as you take the time to rotate them and you, I always brought them in every night too. I didn't just leave them there. Um, you'll be fine. So what I will talk, what I want to talk to you about is seed starting mix, starting from a mix or starting from pellets. Um, and why don't we just start there? Honestly, like as a college student, I couldn't afford the $7 of miracle Grow seed starting potting, whatever, um, that you can buy. It just like, that, that wasn't it. I'm a millennial. I lived paycheck to paycheck. I paid for school out of my own pocket. It was just one of those things where like buying all the things just wasn't something that I could afford. I went to the Dollar Tree a lot and then they have some pretty good seed starting mix in a bag. It's a, like a little tiny bag, but if you're just starting a couple plants, it's not a big deal. I always, always, always used boiling hot water to sterilize that because I didn't know where it was actually coming from. But you do want a growing medium that is sterile, like seed starting mix, not potting soil. So you can get away with potting soil. It's not going to hurt anything, but you'll have to deal with other things if you're growing inside. Like when, I, like there are microbes and other things that are in soils itself. So um, a seed starting mix was always my preference. And honestly, I went to the Dollar Tree and they have these peat pots there too that you can get like, I think four for a dollar. And I wasn't growing on the scale that I am now. So I lived, that was just fine for me. Or I would just have a dish 
like a regular like low dish of course I didn't bring one out here and I would just grow stuff in that I just wanted to make sure that it was like draining um and I would just sow a bunch of seeds in this shallow dish like a casserole dish even um it doesn't have any drainage so I have to be careful but seeds want to grow it's pretty hard to screw them up things that like you might get nervous about is not knowing whether or not something likes to be transplanted meaning from the seed starting median to potting up what's called potting up or to a larger container and then being put out to the garden there are some plants that don't like that and most of the time on the back of a seed packet you will see sow in place or um, doesn't like to be transplanted and those of course are things that you just want to sow directly in place though I have to say I have never had good luck with sowing beans I always have to start them inside otherwise I put them out in the garden and they die and I don't understand why I haven't figured it out and it just happens every time so so there might be some of those things but don't don't feel like if you didn't start seeds last year and have success that you shouldn't try this year because if, especially if you still have those seeds you're not gonna hurt anything by just sticking it in some seed starting medium and see what happens the other thing that you can get are these like little pellets and um you can find these at like home depot this is um, what i showed in my last video it was expanded these are the peat pellets and and once this hits gets hit with water it expands to like it's really deep um they have various sizes i never find that i need to buy the more expensive size which is a bigger disc and a deeper disc for the tomatoes because i pop my tomatoes up anyway and then you know you bury most of the tomatoes so i don't feel like i need that big one if you do by all means but this is what i've used and um some sometimes I like to like plant a seed on each quadrant so that when I'm separating them up to pot up I'm not pulling against the roots but today I just seeded all my peppers in the very middle because I'm like I think they'll be fine they'll be fine I've gotten pretty good at peppers oh don't say that right knock on wood but um so you get yourself some seed, seed starting mix if you can afford the micro grow that's great if you can afford any of the ones in the home depots i know that it's not a ginormous bag but there's also the um, um organic potting mixes you can try just try something i like to go with these like i said um they're also super easy to just pull this fiber off and stick the rest of this dirt which just stays in its little form into my container that i'm potting up so I use the Jiffy pellets. You can use any seed starting mix if you have rich garden soil. I would use that also, again, not inside, but outside. Um, inside, when you have humid, other types of humidity with having a house, um, you can deal with other types of fungus and things like that that can grow. Um, or you can also deal with sometimes with um, like dampening off where like all your seeds die suddenly. It's never happened to me, but it just, I don't know and I've always grown inside um, I've never had a greenhouse so I'm a little hesitant to put anything out yet but I think in about a month it'll be nice to have um, some space inside that's <laughs> not like a permanent structure in my house until July anyway um, so this way if you do this uh, with sterile soil the seed starting mix and you especially if you use hot water you're not gonna deal with any mold or fungus um, and then you'll be fine. And if you use um, potting soil or rich garden soil, you won't necessarily have to deal with some transplant issues, which can happen to seedlings um, when you are potting up. So whatever you decide to do, try it. The thing is, is try it, right? Like seed starting's not hard. So let me go with and show you some of these containers that I have because I feel like um, that's really something that people get hesitant about. I am sure you've, got, you've purchased some like marigolds or something from the store and you have these little containers. Um, these work great. Um, I'm actually gonna be starting, uh, I think most of my tomatoes in this um, type of a cell, which will be nice. Um, they're just a little bit larger. It's, they're not deeper. Once those pellets get expanded, they're about that deep. But um, 
I think I'll have a little bit more space uh, for them, which will be nice. I'm definitely going to start my beans in this because, and I'm gonna do one per, because then I use, I'm looking for, I don't have one right now, but I use a, um, like a tongue depressor uh, because they do not like to be transplanted, hence the sewing in place, but I don't do that. So I take a tongue depressor and I slide it to the side and I go to the very bottom and I pull up on the soil and that'll pull the roots if it's grown below with it. Um, and then, it, but then it doesn't disturb them. So I grow all my, my beans that way. So my beans are all gonna go in, are gonna go in here. And they're, I mean, they're super flimsy, right? Like they're not, I only have three left um, of those types of see, well, the seed cells like that. So um, I don't have that many left because they fall and break and um, they separate and whatever. <laughs> I have a mini greenhouse. This is um, what you can purchase from Home Depot. Um, excuse me, you can get these on Amazon. Um, it's plastic and I've reused it so many times, which is great, you just wash it out. But they, the thing I really like about this is it has a humidity dome, which you're gonna be like, well, but you're in a greenhouse and it's creating a greenhouse in the greenhouse. Yeah, if you're in the greenhouse, I don't know if you would need it, but the way I do it inside is I will put this humidity dome on top and the as long as the seeds have not pressed the soil and actually emerged with their first um, your first little baby leaves. <laughs> um, I keep the humidity dome on. And then once the baby leaves come and it breaks the soil and it needs to come out into the air, I really do want air circulation around those seedlings. I wanna touch them. I wanna like, you know, um, fondle them, so to speak. Don't say that, don't, that's bad. Um, but I wanna make sure that the stems are creating a really strong cellulose membrane as that seed grows and by having air movement or having my hand brush over them it's having the same effect whereas in nature the wind would be coming through and making that seedling nice and strong so it's really important if you're not going to go through and fondle your seedlings again don't say that um then make sure you have a fan on them that can help too or if it's in the greenhouse and you're not going out there every day or checking on them all the time like you know i walk by mine a bazillion times a day because it's right at the end of my couch at the moment um then you may want to just stick a fan out in your greenhouse to give them some movement too. I know it's super cold. It sound, kind of seems counterproductive, but you know, do what works for you. Try it. And if you're like, this is not helping them grow, then stop. That's pretty obvious. Plants want to grow. Seeds want to germinate. Plants want to grow. So you, it's not that you have to like try that hard, but you do have to try hard to neglect them to die. Um, and I've killed seeds before. I've killed plants before. I cannot keep a plant alive inside my house, including succulents. I don't know. I try. Last year, everyone brought plants into their home and I was like, I want to do that too. And I was, no, I'm just going to kill them. I felt really discouraged. And I guess I'm trying to tell people now, like, don't feel that way. Don't, <laughs> don't do what I do, but <laughs> try to do it better. Um, but as your seedling grows, inside the soil humidity dome is, is going to help it creates a mini greenhouse especially if you don't have a greenhouse or are planting in a small space anyone balconies or townhouses this is great and then once your seedling breaks the surface you of course want some movement for the cellulose membrane and obviously you want some light because how else are your seeds going to photosynthesize and create energy it's just basic science man and science is cool so the other thing is I have this massive one and this one holds like 72 different, um, like 72 cells. This is where I put my actual cells in the ones I should do for my beans. And so, um, I will have, I only have three left, so they're only going to go to there. And then the rest, I just put the pellets in. Um, I have my peppers inside right now and the pellets are just on the bottom. I don't have them in anything. Um, and I do have my peppers on a heat mat because peppers germinate at a much higher and grow better at a much higher temperature than other plants. Um, I will also put my tomatoes on a heat mat. I only have one heat mat, so it's a lot of shuffling. Every day I'm shuffling. Um, it's the truth. So the other thing you want to make sure to think about is drainage. Sometimes when you start seeds, especially if you're starting in like a red solo cup or, um, 
egg cartons or eggs or things like that, don't forget to pop a hole in the bottom. It's got to drain. Otherwise, your roots can get waterlogged and then your seeds are going to struggle and potentially die because they're going to rot. And if you think of the, any type of organic material that is in the ocean will rot and die away. And I mean, obviously that's going to happen much faster with fruits because they're babies and they can't handle it. If you don't have the money to like start up with a greenhouse and sometimes you can find these on sale at the end of the season for like, I think I bought one for $1.21. So it was really inexpensive. Um, <clears throat> you can use toilet paper rolls and just use that as your um, container, which is excellent. You can reuse um, paper egg cartons and that's great. You can use peat pots and all kinds of stuff. Just make sure that your container, whatever you use, whatever you have at your in your home, even right now, we all know that there was a bunch of toilet paper that went last year. So you all should have been saving your rolls to plant out your gardens. Um, the nice thing about that is you could also just throw them in your composter afterwards or your compost pile or and compost it because it's a paper product and, and it'll just break down, which is nice. So container, growing medium, obviously the seeds, make sure you have drainage. And now we come to lighting. Lighting shouldn't be tricky. It shouldn't be tricky people. And I think people are afraid of girl lights and I think they're afraid of girl lights because they're like, wait a minute, what's the difference between a fluorescent and an LED for a grow light? Why do I want one over the other? And why do I need full spectrum? And why is it purple? I don't know why it's purple. I don't like the purple. I tease, but um, I'm gonna tell you what, you what we use and then you can figure out what works best for you because your setup is gonna be different than my setup and how many shelves I need for my seeds is not gonna be the same as what you need for yours. So we have one of those metal, five tier metal units and each one we have a seed tray on by the end of February 14th. That's when I start all my seeds, except the fast growing ones, which are gonna come later because um, our last frost date is April 19th. And so it doesn't make sense to start some of the really fast growing crops um, like the beans, because I'm gonna put, I'm starting them inside at the same time I would be starting them outside. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'll probably show, show you that. I'll definitely have pictures on my Instagram, so you should go there. Anyways, um, so we have a metal tier rack, a five tier rack, and on each one we have our seed trays and a light. And the lights that we have, we use our LED full spectrum 3000 plus lumen shop lights. They're shop lights. They're not special grow lights. They're not the ones that you can buy for $80 that have like the wands. Um, it's not that I'm cheap. I am, but you need the, the lumen put out is the most important aspect of any grow light situation. And you need over 3000 plus lumens. That's it. You can do fluorescent, you can do LED. Um, LED uses less energy and it emits less heat. And when you have your, when you have your grow lights like here, cause this is how low they are when they're babies, they want as much 12 hours of, of light as they can. And sometimes I do a little more if I'm up late, but you want them super, super low. So I don't want it giving off that much heat. My house is warm enough. I've got kids running around they'll be okay. So we use the LEDs because they're more energy efficient. They use less energy. They emit less heat than fluorescence. But if fluorescence is what you can find, fluorescence are a much better, um, they are a much better option than incandescence because they also emit less heat than an incandescent. Um, and they're much more energy efficient than an incandescent. So the only thing is, um, fluorescent lights can be a little bit expensive. Uh, more energy efficient, get yourself some LEDs or fluorescent grow lights. If you can't, that's fine. Put them in a window, in a sunny window. Put them by your back door where the sun comes in. I literally did that. Just try something. If you have a patio or a balcony, you can always put these out there. Um, 
like I wouldn't necessarily put them out if it's snowing outside, but there's no reason why you wouldn't be able to, to, to grow something, to just start your seeds and start your garden. And it's not hard. It's pretty simple. There's not many things involved and I know all of you can do it. And don't get discouraged if you've had seedlings in the past die. We all have. That's part of learning. Like failure, you have to fail at something to learn those things, that you can't do those things. And um, like I have a discussion with my kids every week. They're young, so their discussions are pretty simple. But I'm like, what'd you fail at? Because my son especially gets so upset if he does something wrong. And I'm like, no, let's normalize failing. It's not a big deal. You, did you learn something from it? Great, so we're gonna move on and not do that again. So with seed starting, did you start in a solo cup and not put the drainage on the bottom? Did you go out and buy all the things last year so that you could take care of everything and just didn't know what to do and then they all died? That's okay, all of that's okay because you learned something from it. We're all moving on together to try to make this next growing season like really bountiful and abundant. And um, I just, I really hope that all of you can just give it a try. And if it felt overwhelming, let me know. I want to know. I think that's everything, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. It's probably going to snow in the next couple hours here, so I should probably go inside. But I, um, I really, I really am excited for all the seeds that we're starting. I mean, I started 60 seeds today, <laughs> 60 plants today. Well, more than that, depending on how many germinate. But um, 60 pellets, 60 pellets I started. And I am super excited with all my peppers. We are a pepper family. I'm growing, just to tell you what I'm growing. I should have brought my seeds out here. Why don't I do that? I'm, I should just make a video of everything I'm growing for you, right? Anyway, I'm growing the Zulu pepper. I'm growing a variegated red pepper from the Dollar Tree. Um, I got the seeds a while ago and I wanna just see if they still germinate. So I'm doing the Zulu pepper, the Tangerine Dream, the green bell, the green and red bell peppers. I'm doing um, the Thunderbolt Sweet Red, the Cuba, uh, Cubanelle. I'm doing Craig's Grande Jalapeno, the Natapeno, the Shishitos. Um, I'm also doing, I'm missing something. Mm -hmm. I knew I would. That's okay, because clearly you understand I'm growing a lot of peppers, and I am happy to show you all the varieties um, in the next video. All right, guys, thank you for joining me today. Till next time. Bye.